Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another video for the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. You guys have been asking for more of this, so here it is. In today's video, I want to show you guys how to get this, the Great Fairy Sword. If you remember, in my last video, I showed you guys how to get the Gilded Sword, which required some pretty efficient time management in order to fit everything in before the end of the third day, but this time, this one is a lot more forgiving. However, with that being said, it is still a little annoying. It'll have you hunting down all 15 stray fairies in the fourth and final temple, Stone Tower. Now, just like in my last video, I'm going to streamline this just to show you exactly what you need to get, so this won't be a complete walkthrough for the Stone Tower Temple, instead I'll just explain how to get to each of the fairies in the various rooms. So, with that in mind, let's begin. Fairy number one. As soon as you walk into the temple, right in front of you is a platform, and at the back of that is a sort of stone face, and in the left eye is a target for you to shoot. If you shoot that, it will summon a chest. You can then wander over to the chest and you can either use the Zora mask to jump over to the platform or you can whip out your hookshot, grapple onto the chest, pull yourself over there, open it up and that is fairy number one. Fairy number two is in this room. Now all these rooms should be pretty recognisable, they're all pretty distinct so if you've been around Stone Temple then hopefully you know where this is but from here you want to turn to your right, look up and hookshot that target on the ceiling, you then drop down, there's a chest there, open it up and that's number two. Now then, the next one we can't actually access just yet but we need to make the chest spawn so that we can access it later on. When you enter this room, the one with the bridge in the middle and the water surrounding it, swim to the other side, climb out of the water above where the Dexy hand is, and use your spin attack right next to the fence so that you hit the crystal. That will cause the chest to spawn, and we can now move on. Next, drop down just below using the Zora mask and go through the tunnel where the Dexy hand was, sink to the bottom, walk to the back, stand on the switch but watch out for those mines, and you'll be able to summon another chest. Again, this one's for later. With that done, float to the surface, go through the locked door, and you'll come to this room. Punch out the blocks using your Goron mask, and the light will shine through. Firstly, you want to begin by looking to your right, and using your mirror shield, reflect the light on the leftmost sun face. This will then spawn a chest, open it, and that's fairy number three. Then, for number four, charge up the mirror on the right hand side, and reflect that onto the sun block. Once it's disappeared, go into the alcove, defeat the Nijiron, and open the chest to get fairy number four. Now then, this next one is a little bit tricky just because it requires precise timing. You'll come into this room here where there are jet streams and a plant for you to fly around using your Deku Scrub, but before that, drop down as a Goron into the lava down below. There's a switch down here, and you want to use your Goron Ground Pound to activate it, and then when you do so, the flames around the switch on the other side will go down. However, you have a very tight time window. So, being as fast as you can, use your Goron Roll ability, try not to hit the walls as that will slow you down, but roll all the way around the U-shaped room and stand on the switch. That will cause the chest to spawn, and we can get to that in just a second. Now climb back up the ladder, change into a Deku, and begin flying using those jet streams. Before you go all the way around, however, go left into the first alcove. Drop down in here, open this chest, and that is fairy number five. Then drop back down into the lava, climb back up the ladder, and this time you can fly all the way around the room and open up the sixth chest, the one we just spawned from the switch. So right now, you should now have six fairies. Next up, once you fought the mini boss and got the light arrows, you'll come out here to the room we were in before with the bridge and the water, but now you're actually on the bridge. Kill the Igor in front of you, and as soon as you do, a chest will spawn behind you, open that, and that is your seventh fairy. At this point, that's all we can do right now, we now need to flip the temple upside down, and we can start phase two. So play the song of soaring, or just walk outside, and then turn around, use your light arrows to shoot the scarab, that'll flip the temple upside down, and now we can begin phase two. Go back inside, walk down to the middle, and if you've already shot the sun face, then the chest will already be here. I actually did that by accident, so apologies for that, but if you look directly up from standing on the Majora's Mask plate, you can see the sun face I was talking about, so if the chest isn't here when you first come in, simply stand on that, look up, shoot it, and it will spawn. Either way, open it up, and you now have fairy number eight. Then you'll come to this room, and three jet streams that propel you to different heights in the room. Before that, drop down, Turn around and using your fire arrows, shoot the frozen eye and that will spawn a chest right across from you. Now fly directly across to that chest, open it and that's your ninth fairy. But we're not done here. Now fly up to the middle platform using the jet streams and your Deku scrub and you'll find a blue switch. Stand on it using either Link, Zora or Goron and it will summon a chest on the top platform. Play the Elegy of Emptiness to leave a statue there and then fly to the top platform, watch out for the mines again, and then if you open that chest, that is fairy number 10. 
Then you can drop down onto the bridge in the center. And one more thing before we leave, once you have dropped down, spin around and shoot that eye and that will spawn yet another chest, which we'll get in phase three. Now the next fairy you'll find after you've defeated Wizrobe. There's a chest up on the ledge, hook shot up to it, open that up and that is fairy number 11. Then you'll come to a section where you're outside and you'll be presented with this platform in front of you. Watch out for the floating death armors, but if you can jump over, stand on the switch and you'll summon another chest, which we'll get to shortly. Now at this point you're actually ready to go to the boss room, but we still have four fairies to find, so we now want to go back outside and flip the temple once again. Once you've done that and you've gone back inside, enter the main room, drop down to the bottom and open that chest. That's one of the ones we summoned earlier, and that is fairy number 12. Then, now we have light arrows, when you're back in this room, the one with the water and the bridge, turn to your left, destroy the sunblock, blow up the other enemy, and now you can reach that chest that we summoned before. That is fairy number 13. Then, using your Zora mask, jump back in the water, swim to the other side, through the tunnel, past the Dexy hand, and you'll come back into this room here, sink down a bit, and on top of that platform is another chest that we summoned earlier, and that is fairy number 14. And for the last one, when you're in this room where you fight the hip loop on the thin bridge, kill it and then drop down and you'll find the 15th and final fairy inside that chest. Now we have all 15 fairies, so you can either go and fight the boss and sort this out later, or we can get the fancy new sword, then go back and fight the boss, and seeing as this new sword does pretty hefty damage, it'll probably be pretty handy. So, leave the temple, soar to Ikana Canyon, head towards the music hut, and then go right into this house and you'll find the fairy fountain. The fairies will then reassemble, the great fairy will kindly thank you for your service and give you the great fairy sword. Now this is an interesting weapon because it doesn't go in your sword slot, it's actually used as an item. So you can equip it to say X for example and use it from there. It's also a two-handed weapon, kind of like the big Goron sword from Ocarina of Time. It's very powerful but do be mindful that you don't have your shield. Also, another interesting fact is, if you get cursed by these skulls right here, they prevent you from drawing your sword. They don't, however, prevent you from drawing this sword. And on that bombshell, that brings me to the end of this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it, hopefully you found it helpful, hopefully it's shown you how to get this, and if you did find it useful, then be sure to leave a like and hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already part of the Arax Gaming Nation, then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys found this helpful, or if you've got any other questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.